Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. This is Travis Simulants Hours, and we're jumping into a traditional best of three Strixhaven draft on MTG Arena. First draft of the day. Chat, say hello to YouTube. So if we've opened a Wandering Alcoholic, and there's not a whole lot else here unless you wanted to go nuts for Rutha early. And I'm not opposed to going nuts for Rutha early. I just don't love Prismari. If you watched my last YouTube video, uh, you know why. And it's because I fundamentally do not understand how the stack works. Now, if you like the draft, consider subscribing to the channel. We're getting close to that magical thousand subscribers. And if you really like the content, come on by the Twitch stream. The twitch.tv slash simulan. I think I like starting with the Wandering Archaic. But I could respect somebody taking Rutha here. I could even like fringe support somebody taking past summoning if they really wanted to force to mirror. But like the, the level of impact that this card has on a game is difficult to notice because your opponent has to play around it. So you you don't quite see how good it is uh, until you play against it. And then you're like, oh my God, this thing's annoying. This feels like a relatively easy Mage Hunter's Onslaught. I don't know about Slam Dunk Mage Hunter's Onslaught, but relatively easy. Uh, I, I do like the Ink Caster in some Silver Quill decks, and occasionally in some Wither Bloom decks. And I suppose I could respect the Inkling Summonings too, but usually if I'm going for black cards, I want to pair it with uh, blue or green. I don't love black white, but you do what you gotta do. All right, now the pickings be getting a little slimmer. We really need to like nail down what's the best card in this pack because I'm kind of only seeing test of talents and that, that might be me leading towards trying to force a particular deck and I don't want to do that. Or do I? I think it's too early to take Infuse. I, I do like combat tricks. I usually like grabbing them eighth or later. I think the best cards in this pack are Test of Talents, Leyline Invocation, Zephyr Boots, and Practical Research. And maybe Campus Guide this early, because I just I don't know what we're doing yet. But I, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to take the test. There's nothing there to push me in a direction. When I get pushed, I'll move. And so here's a slight push. There's the Quandrix Apprentice. It's good. It's real good. There's also a Thunderous Orator. It's good. It's real good. And there's a Burying Box, also real good. It wasn't that sad of a booster. It had a lot of role players for different archetypes, but not really a reason to be in any of the archetypes. So I do believe the Quandrix Apprentice is probably the best card here. And if I took the Burying Box, I would kind of be trying to force blue-black, which I don't really want to do. I could also respect the Thunderous Orator. And to a lesser extent, the Expel. But I, if I need to draft in the lines, I can draft in the lines. Gosh darn it, why do people keep passing this? Slash, is it too late? Because we go from that pack to this pack, and we've been seeing some late adjacent Expels. And this doesn't really have anything. I guess it's got the Mage Hunter? Yeah, it's got the Mage Hunter. Mage Hunter's not bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, Thunair. Don't know what to do with your day off? You watch the stream. Obviously. You're already doing it. You're doing the right thing right now. Alright, so I'm starting to get my first genuine signals here. And it, it looks like Witherbloom and Lorehold are open, and Blue just isn't. And with two picks already into black, it's looking like... Because I, I, I would be interested in trying to mirror, but this is not how those decks start. It's a very fun deck, but this isn't how it goes. So I think I'm going to take the Honor Troll. It's a role player in this deck, and let's see what Witherbloom stuff comes by. Man, we literally splashed for an Ardent Dust Speaker yesterday, and it was good. 
and none of this is great. I, I'm going to take it, and if literally all of the lore hold stuff wheels, I'll just move. And then there was this. I like this a lot. There's also the Needlethorn Drake. I'm so spread out. Now, I've done, like, incredible multicolor decks before, but I need to have a reason. Like, we just don't have the power here. Well, this is the best card. We'll take it. I suppose I could still flush the black cards and just be Quandrix. I, I need to, like, figure out what the heck is open. I don't think I'm so scared for playables that I need to take, like, a Bayou Bra for a Karak. There's also just nothing else here. So, I guess Containment Breach is fine if we're green and we have Learn. But I don't even know that we're playing green yet. Let's take it. It's still a fair sideboard card. Okay. What do heck? Yeah, seriously, Shadus, we got problems. Duress is certainly playable. I have played Unwilling Ingredients before. Good morning, Tommy. I've never been happy about it, though. I'm going to take the Curate, and if things get interesting next pack, we'll talk. And then there's a bloody Expel. Last pick. I don't understand that. I really don't. I guess I was supposed to force Lorehold. Because right now, I, I mean, I'm still going to take it. Maybe we end up in weird Silver Quill control. But, like... Out of that first pack, I have four cards that I think I'm going to play. But I'm not sure yet. So I could take another Mage Hunter's Onslaught and feel like I've probably got removal and then whatever happens to actually be open, we'll just play with that. It's not really fast enough removal, but it's removal. I could also take the Combat Professor and just trust that Silver Quill is going to be open, but I, I, I think if we're going to pick a color to stick with right now, and this has been a challenging draft, uh, which can sometimes happen in a format like this where you're kind of constrained uh, to five or six color pairs, but any color that's open, I can play with this if I have two removal spells and a duress and you know a, a decent creature base. So I'm going to take this, and we're going to see what happens. That's not the good one, is it? No, it's not. But there's a flonk. So everything that led to me wanting to pick this Mage Hunter's Onslaught now puts me here. So, welcome to the team, Flonk. Any minute now, we're going to see a sign that a particular color pair is open. So Blood Researcher could do the thing with the stuff. We would get to play the Honor Troll. I'm going to want some lessons and some learning. That would already be okay at getting us the Containment Breach if I wanted to take Field Trip. The problem is you're not usually ramping into anything in this deck. And I don't have any life gain yet to go with the Blood Researcher, although it can be a real threat. The other option would be to take this and Hedge. But I think I'm willing to give this a go. If Witherbloom is open, I shouldn't have a problem growing this. If it's not, eh, we move along. Okay. So there's nothing here for a Witherbloom deck that's good. Like, you'll play these, but you're like, eh, okay, sure. But maybe what I need to do here is take this Lorehold Campus and think about... Not playing it because we're going to take this? I don't know yet. But we'll see. I could play the Dust Speaker and I could play the Expel and we could do Mardu things. But I don't even need to be in Green Black to be happy with a Spectre. I haven't been super impressed with the Pestilent Cauldron. Because you've got to find a way to gain life. I guess it is like Ghetto Card Draw. I just want my Spectre. Everything's still open. Mono black. 
Okay, mono black so far. Somebody help me figure out what's going on in this draft. I'm confused. Good morning, Band Geek. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. This is the weirdest draft I've ever played. I mean, sure, we can try it. It's like, what am I supposed to be doing? I, I think I'm very interested in a campus guide now because I don't even know what I'm playing other than it's probably black. So I could take the Kelpie guide and do Demir but not Demir spells. That doesn't strike me as particularly appealing. Yeah, magnets, how do they work? I think this is something... I could potentially splash the Rutha and the Dust Speaker. And maybe look at something like this. Demir weird things. Well, indecisive or everyone's decided they want to do like five color shenanigans. This would actually set us up for the Mardu mana which is a little more reasonable than trying to do Grixis, uh, even though we would have the Rutha. Yeah, I, I think drafting within the wedges makes more sense than trying to draft with outside of them. I'll play Go Blank. That's fine. Because I could, like... If it'll let me take this out. Why won't it let me take this out? I could play the Expel... I've got the Lorehold Campus. I could potentially play that if I need to. I could play this Elite Spellbinder. So that could put us kind of like black-white, sort of splashing for the Dust Speaker. Yeah, we could certainly play Paulo. So after all of this, I'm going to end up with a Silver Quill-ish deck. I think the Spellbinder is better than the Combat Professor, but it's close, okay? That, that, like, Combat Professor is really good. I also don't have any threes, and I have one, two. Good morning, Andy. So I think we're going to be Black White Splash for the Dust Speaker. But this has been a really difficult to navigate draft so far. So there's Cody, and it is way too late for us to Cody. Which does make me sad, because I like to Cody. Thank you, Andy. That was a really fun draft. Uh, uh, we've already mentioned I don't have any twos, and I'm going to need to take one here. I, I don't think I... Well, we don't have any lessons in learn yet. And it, it's unlikely we're going to get any. This table seems to be valuing them way higher than I am. So we really can't get into Cody. If we did, we'd need to ditch most of what we're playing and play like garbage blue cards. Which I, I don't think I can get behind. I, I think I need to take the Arrogant Poet and try to build a deck that can get some wins. You're on Anatomy? There's no way to fetch it. It would just live in our sideboard and not do anything. I agree it's the best card, but I can't do anything with it. Now, Reconstruct History, on the other hand, I got three sorceries, four, two instants. Now, that is a splash-worthy card if I've ever seen one. I'm also playing an artifact already. I think it was Sweatsuit number 16. Because what I I think the adult pick here is the Pilgrim. But Reconstruct History is so good. Uh, if you're going to play three colors, you may as well have the advantages of three colors. Okay, there's a two drop I can run. There's also one Guiding Voice. Well, Reconstruct Wheel, it shouldn't. That doesn't mean it won't, but it shouldn't. This would give me another instant, which I think I'm interested in, and okay, main decking. I don't really have anything to fetch yet with the Guiding Voice. 
and I'm a little concerned about turn two plays. I kind of still want the guiding voice, but I think I need to be a grown up. I don't mind playing Agonizing Remorse main either. I kind of feel less incentivized to take it because I've already got the duress. I'm a little short playable, so Promising Dusk Mage is probably going to get in this deck. Even though I don't really have any way to do anything with it. I think that's going to put me on Pest Summonings, and if I get any Learn card at this point, I'll play it. That is a gift, and we're very happy to see it. It also shouldn't be here, but people do not understand this card, and I'm very okay with that. People, please continue not understanding this card. All right, two drops are covered. Can I get an upgrade to Promising Dusk Mage? So I could literally splash for my one learn card. It is not an upgrade. Make your mark cannot block. I don't think I'm doing this, but I might. Ooh. Mana's not going to be good enough to play this dude. I could play a Rescuer, but I'm not going to get back anything I care about. I suppose you could get back a Paolo, but it's not like I need more fives. Yeah, it's the pick. I know it's the pick. I'm just not happy about it. Dueling Coach is okay, and it does, I, I mean, it's small, but it gives me something to do here. I don't think we're so aggressive that I want the Tenured Ink Caster, but I could I could see playing this at least. And Pilgrim Wield, okay, now we're talking. Do we need a Letter of Acceptance? I think that might just be the rug that ties the room together. Yes, agree, explode. Oh, can you help me? I, I'm sorry, I didn't see your, your question there, Twitchy. So you're saying you only play Divine Gambit out of the sideboard. Out of most packs that you see Divine Gambit in, it should be the first card that you take. Now, you're not going to play it on turn two, but one of the reasons that people do what I'm about to do here and look at their mana curve is generally speaking, you want to play the creatures as soon as you possibly can. And generally speaking, you don't want to play your removal spells as soon as you possibly can. So the fact that this costs two mana doesn't mean that you're going to play it on turn two. It's really something you're going to play on turn six to kill something that's going to kill you. Uh, generally speaking, same with Mage Hunter's Onslaught. You're not often going to turn four this. You know, if you're curving out, you'd rather go like Campus Guide, Pilgrim of the Ages, Spectre of the Fens, Owl and Shield Mage, and then start killing stuff, right? So Divine Gambit is two mana, and it kills anything in the game. It kills creatures, artifacts, or enchantments. They're dead. So a lot of people have this idea that they'll run it out a little too early, and then the opponent plays something huge, and then you're like, ah, oh, I, I lose. You shouldn't use it there. Okay, but I can walk you through why you should evaluate it differently. Because if you're using it correctly, you will only use it to kill something that is going to kill you within a few turns or when they're empty-handed. And if they've got something in play that's going to kill you in a few turns, and you use Divine Gambit, and they use the free mana to play something that's going to kill you in a few turns, you were already dead. You could have played Mage Hunter's Onslaught. You would have also been dead. You could have played Flunk, or Expel, or any of these cards. Then behold, I will show you the way, because Divine Gambit is one of the, the best removal spells in this set. I should not be able to routinely get the seventh pick. Uh, when we play in the Sweatsuit Invitationals, when it was in this format, you did not get these passed. All right, let's figure out this mana base because it needs to be a little wonky. Because we're kind of maining black with like light touches of the other. So the question is how many red sources do I need? And I think four would be ideal. 
although both of the the cards are late game, uh, but this lets me get four sources in if we're counting the letter of acceptance. So I'd like to get this to nine swamps if I or eight swamps if I can. Would that still leave me enough white? That would leave me six, seven, eight, nine white sources. Yeah, the man is actually not that bad. And if I can get one white, I can get to double white. And it's not like we want to cast Divine Gambit on turn two. So I think everything's going to be fine. All righty, let's do our Stream Raiders battle and then get into this. Uh, there's not many of us for this fight, but you know what? It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Yeah, I suppose that's the other aspect of it exploded. And to be fair, to be fair, Twitchy Oinker, that may be why we like the cards differently. If you play Silver Quill a lot... Divine Gambit is not as good. I'm far more likely to be playing Lorehold or to be playing Silver Quill as a mid-range deck. Which I don't think is exactly how you're supposed to play Silver Quill, but I still do it anyway. Because I'm a man of culture. What's up, Unnamed? This map with these vents bugs me a little bit. I don't quite understand the design choice other than wanting to watch your units walk around a bunch. I'm excited for that too, Intangible. If we can get enough people, we still need one more. <laughs> I like that, Kevin. Grew in the dark and Nexus Allens with the kills and assists rewards for Orcish Simwife, my favorite person, and Wee Wizard. All right, let's kill some monsters and see if I drafted a pile or a masterpiece. I would like to do more viewer drafts uh, rather than a master pile. I like that. Rather than one a week, I'd like to get to at least two a week. Yeah, thanks for being here, Twitchy Oinker. Oinkers are always welcome. As I don't know if you knew it or not, but there's actually a pig club that I consider you to be part of. Orcus Artillery knows what's up. I would prefer not to assault people in chat. Yeah, y'all gonna need to take that outside of here if you want to keep talking about it. In Battlefield 5, I created O-I-N-K. Anyone that is ghosting streamers is... Breaking the Twitch terms of service and is bad at the video game. Like, that's easy peasy. There's no conversation there. Morning, Amy. Did you have as hard a time as I did figuring out what the heck was going on in this draft? Because I couldn't tell you what people were drafting. I ended up with Mardu Pile. 
I did what I could in the sweatsuit. I like land drops. Yes, I do. I like land drops. How about you? I also apparently really like two ones. I had to navigate. Now they gonna get better stuff than this and my board can already handle it. So I, I don't think I mage hunters onslaught here. This is not, this is not the end game of their deck. And this is not the end game of my deck. I think some, I don't think I got any learn cards. I think somebody took all of them. Now with the second onslaught, I'm somewhat tempted to do something, but I think we cast this first and then reevaluate because I can take four. Or that could be rejected. Maybe this is their end game. All right, let's let's talk about what you're doing over here cuz I think I'm ready for you to stop casting things. So let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of this. And let's look to recover. So you generally don't play Curate unless you have a Serpentine Curve. Or at least I generally don't play Curate unless I have a Serpentine Curve. I've played Reject a decent amount. I, I usually will, will sub it in for a two drop if I'm playing uh, Serpentine Curves. So like these are two cards that are pointing towards Serpentine Curve being a finisher for this deck. Well, it, it's worse here too um, because there's so many spells in the format that you, like people aren't necessarily just running out creatures. I'm trying to decide here if this is what I think is going to kill me and if I have enough removal uh, to deal with the Serpentine Curve. And I, I think I have to kill this. I don't have to like it. But I think they're so far ahead that I have to. The, the downside is I probably just die if they draw their Serpentine Curve. So I'd really like it if they would not draw that. That'd be swell. It said I do get to catch up relatively quick. Now it's like them who needs to answer my stuff. Is this good when they have two cards? I feel like it might be. Ever go blank somebody for lethal? Because I have. So maybe they did that to hide the serpentine curve they have in their deck, but I already know they have one. Because you're not playing Reject and Curate if you don't have a Serpentine Curve. You're not playing Opt if you don't have a Serpentine Curve. Like, that's just... That's not an adult decision. Excelling their yard doesn't actually matter for Curve. So the question is still, do I want an academic dispute so that I could have the off chance of casting a teaching of the archaics if I happen to have a letter of acceptance in play and the huge upside of getting to cast a pest summonings? I don't think I do. I think the deck did what it's supposed to do. ha. <laughs> Pretty good exploded. I mean, I guess it could give me access to containment breach too, but my goodness. Oh, 
Uh, Sir, young Trogdor, Sir is just teasing me. I often refer to this as a children's card game. It's going to come out of the mirror. I see what you're doing there. I don't think I actually have much of a sideboard here unless we think we really need access to artifact removal. I don't think I really need access to artifact removal. But that was a good example of a deck where Divine Gambit is just a two-mana removal spell. They didn't really have any creatures in their deck. I know there's a Serpentine Curve in there somewhere and I'm bloody terrified of it, but like, what you gonna do? <clears throat> Play more Divine Gambits. There you go. Ovs. Black White Skies. I figure. What are you working with over here? You got a Manifestation Sage. I definitely don't want you casting that right now. You got a Tangle Trap. I mean, that sucks, but go ahead, do what you got to do. I think we we stonewall this. The Colony's annoying too, but like, um, we can just trade for a Flyer, that's fine. I think this is what I'm most scared of right now. Because they would draw a card and then play this as a 6-6. Six, six. I'm, just, I'm just not dealing with that. It would have been a 6-6. Six, six. They didn't need to play a land first. I think we Pilgrim here. I don't have the black mana to kill that, even though I'm going to want to, and I could just double block it. We know they don't have anything to interact with it currently. They've got two unknown cards, but this should hold that back. We've got a Squirrel Rid Colony. Which is kind of fine. Like, I can eventually kill that. I don't really want to block with the Allen, but I also don't have to. We are going to have some 4 4 problems here in a little bit. Okay. So there's the 4-4 problems, and I'm getting a little bit of trouble by not hitting my land drops. But I could still conceivably block those and just pew pew this, which I think I need to do now. They can play this, and it's another 4-4. I mentioned we're going to have 4-4 problems, but I'd rather have 4-4 problems than 8-8 problems. And we could also just, you know, draw black mana. That'd be swell. Reconstruct history would be legitimate adjacent. Well, that's neat. I get to kill a 4-4 that matters. Although you want to give me a freebie, huh? I'll take a freebie.
What's up, Captain Howdy? Well, now, isn't that unfortunate? That's a well-timed frost trickster. I did a whole uh, video series called The Joy of Drafting. Um, you can find that by typing exclamation point joy, and I think that goes through a lot of the fundamentals of, of drafting, which would kind of answer some of those questions. I would suggest you check that out, Howdy. Generally speaking, for me, I'll try to find what's open and draft that, uh, but that can also change some depending on whether you're playing best of one or best of three. I'm pretty sure that Frost Trickster just kills us here and there ain't nothing I can do about it. Because I can kill a 4-4 and then take 6. I can get back Divine Gambit, kill a 4-4 and take 6. I can gain 2 and then take a bazillion. So that one's just done. We had some 4-4 problems. We also had some didn't get black mana fast enough problems. I could sort of see playing the Rescuer. But it just, it doesn't get back anything that matters. But I think your biggest advantage is to be gained by figuring out what other people at the table aren't drafting and then draft that. So I have a tendency to generally draft what most people would say are the worst decks in a given format and then to win a lot of games with them. Because the best version of the worst deck is better than a mediocre version of the best deck. So when everybody was drafting Cycling in Ikoria, I avoided it like the plague, drafted uh, Mardu Sacrifice, which limited resources, I think, named a specific rare for that deck and said it was unplayable. I was like, cool, gimme, gimme, gimme. And I, I tend to draft Lorehold a lot in Strixhaven, which apparently a lot of people consider bad. Lorehold and Witherbloom are my two favorite schools because I get the most wins with them. I still don't really have much of a sideboard, eh? I could try Essence Infusion to try to keep pace with them because their removal kind of sucks unless I put it on a flyer. I don't love Essence Infusion, though. Yeah, I, I don't want to try that. I think I'd only do that if I was incredibly desperate. I've seen entire decks built around Essence Infusion, but we don't have one of those. We have kind of white removal spells, black removal spells, and a dream. There's technically 15 lands plus the campus guide, so I think we're about half and half to draw lands each turn. Obviously, we'd prefer not to miss, but... That's a shame. The Spellbinder would have been real good this turn. They looking too. But they have found what they seek. So what was it you was planning to do? You was going Eureka Moment into an Elemental Masterpiece. Now I can play around a Test of Talents. I don't know that I can actually beat a best uh, a Barry in books. Which really sucks. But I don't think I can beat that. I think if I'm going to beat them, it's going to be because I have air power and they can't do anything about it.
All right, so they're almost assuredly going to hit that Elemental Masterpiece next turn. I mean, I, I don't really have a choice. The only thing I can do is cast Go Blank this turn. The question is, can I afford to attack with a Spellbinder and trade it with that? And I think currently I kind of can't. Yeah, it means they have to keep that in the mountain. So, like, we kind of handle the test of talents. Um, but, it, like, I, I have to be able to untap. And hit a land drop. And kill this. Oh, I'm probably losing this game. We've missed too many lands. I mean, when your opponent's casting seven drops and you're like, man, I hope I hit my fourth land, you're probably in trouble anyway. Right on time. What's up, Timber? I've probably got an opportunity to use uh, an Expel to get one of these tokens. And then I could potentially defend the campus, the other one. I'd like to use the... I guess you would want to use Defend the Campus first. It uses up all my mana. I don't want to trade my creatures for their 4-4s. Four I need the creatures. Now we could potentially... Now they're going to bounce this if I attack with it, which is not great. What's up, Timber? I think I've played EDH like three times and I did not care for it. I guess I don't hate redrawing the Spellbinder. It's just kind of brutal. That, that does need to go. I'd get another trigger off of it, which is fine. Or not, that's also fine. But we will have at least ground through things if they attack with this 4-4. Uh, four, four. Now, the downside is we know they have some bigger stuff in their deck. And if they start landing it, they're probably going to win. I can't imagine they don't bury this here because it's not a great draw for me. So I think the best card to have on top right now would be Campus Guide so I can shuffle that away. Uh, that was not the case, though, and we're still stuck only being able to play one spell a turn. At least I can double spell next turn, but I, I don't know that a pair of two drops are going to do enough. We will see, though. Now, if I can hit a red source and get this dust speaker going, we can maybe draw enough cards to get back into this. But this, this is what I was talking about. It's big and it's scary, and if I don't draw a removal spell for it relatively quickly, we're in danger. I, I feel like there's a serpentine curve in this deck somewhere, and they just haven't drawn it. I don't think I have to chump that yet, but I'm starting to get close. I really need a red source. Oh, 
Okie dokie. Well, that's a start. I need them to be scared of me. And this puts me in a position where if they don't kill me and attack and play a blocker, I could top deck another removal spell and win. What's probably going to happen is they Eureka moment and play their 2-2 uh, two -two flyer and get me. But I'd still like to be in a position where I can win. What happens if I just kill that? We're pretty on par. I could do that and hit him for three in the air. Well, let's see if this sticks first. I think that's my line to victory because that would put me at five. They don't have lethal on board. I don't think I attack with the first year. I don't see much point in it. Double Tangle Trap. Okay. It is a good answer to uh, Silver Quill Dax, which I think, generally speaking, we are. This puts us in an incredibly awkward position, because for a long time, drawing a red source would have been great. But now it's not. Because my card advantage engine has to chomp block. Oh, that is just brutal. I think this leaves me without outs. It certainly does if they have an 8-8. Eight eight. Yeah, that's not going to do it. We did. What a chomp, indeed. It's okay, you win some, you, you lose some. I I don't put too much stock in the, the emotes people make. Like, you do what you gotta do. It does not bother me. All right, let's do our Stream Raiders battle and then see if we can get another win here. No, not Curse. I want a Killing Field. And we're going to chop through all these bad dudes. Have we confirmed with everyone who signed up? I have not. So if you'd like to sign up as like an alternate, if somebody doesn't show up, just type sign up alternate in there. Uh, it is currently 11.15 a.m. So it would be about an hour and 45 minutes from now that we'll be doing this. <laughs> Zurgeon, thank you for the resub. Still in D. I'll spam some cats for Zurgeon. I did not win my first match. Pew, 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 pew. Pew. K with the kills, Sim Wife, my favorite person, with the assists, rewards for Wee Wizard and Orcish Artillery. These aren't really that hard. That's kind of the secret. Oop. All right, let's see if we can win our second match. That would be nice. This was an incredibly difficult draft. Like, I had no idea what the heck was open. Still don't. I'm not sure what I was supposed to be drafting in that seat. You are very welcome to do this with Andy, Kevin. I don't consider that cheating. You and your buddy want to get on there and draft together. Y'all go right ahead. Initial start was looking like I might be trying to do blue-black or uh, green-black. That's why I don't mind, Kevin. Most people are willing to jump ship into a new guild. Then I got a late Divine Gambit and was like, we need to do this. I think a lot of people are trying uh, multicolor decks, 
which makes it a lot harder to read signals. What's up, Miklas? I hate Prismarian Teamer. I never want to play those if I can avoid it. I think Lorehold is actively the best deck in the format by a huge margin. Never want to play it. I mean, I'll play it. it I'll play whatever's open. Like, that kind of is what it is. You got to play what's open. This is probably good enough. Although, it'd be a little better. Yeah, fine. Well, the issue with um, Lorehold is I don't think a lot of people know what the right picks are. They want to race me. Which I'm not thrilled about, but like, here we are. If they release a best of three Theros, I would probably give it a try. Uh, but short of that, no, I, I don't think I would be interested in doing best of one in a format I've never played. This doesn't matter. I don't want that. A viewer draft? Probably not. Like if we're gonna draft, if we're gonna do a viewer draft for an old set, it would need to be an old set that I really liked. Because otherwise, we could just do, um... We could just do Chaos Drafts. Or the Corset Drafts. I really enjoyed those. I want to get even weirder with the uh, stuff we're doing on the Heroku app. Goat tastes really gamey. I don't know why you would eat it unless you just didn't have other options, which is fine. I, and maybe there's people that like it, but like, you could eat chicken, you could eat fish, you could eat venison. Uh, the original Innistrad, I think, was one of the worst limited formats we've ever seen, but people have nostalgia for it. But like, it was pretty bad. It was basically Ixalan. It was Ixalan with like a few cool build arounds sprinkled in it that half half of the people didn't know about. So once you learned about it, you could do that. Yeah, I think I'm game. Get out of my game. I don't need to deal with you. Or you. Like, I might do an Ikoria draft. That's a format I really enjoyed. I might want to do a uh, Dominaria. I, that wasn't my favorite format ever. Uh, but the Sweatsuit Invitational this week is Dominaria, so that might be a good practice. Like, there's a lot of stuff we could do.
is going to do three damage, which is not enough. I need it to do four. Which is awkward. I really need them to double spell. I hope they do. I guess they're like, if they're playing a land, they're probably going to double spell. Why wouldn't you play this? I don't understand. Why in the world wouldn't you play that? I guess now I don't have to worry about you playing it. Go blank looks pretty good against what they're doing now. Do I need to flunk that? I'm at a low enough life total, I probably do. I should have done it before I cast the other thing, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it or not yet. Which is a good argument for make the decision first. There's a chance I actually want to trade these, depending on what I've got coming up, because that could be a threat lighter. I think I do. I gotta believe my top decks are better at this point. It's not like I was blocking that, and I certainly wasn't racing it. We generated a ton of value in this game, but I'm still just dying to two twos. I may have to upkeep Scry here. I I also don't really think I can afford to. Yeah, I've got five drops in this deck. I can't afford to. We scryed three lands to the bottom, and I don't want to draw them. So I don't think we're fetching with this dude. They're pretty close to just being able to kill me with this historian. Land is not what I wanted to draw there.
I need like a lash of malice for this deck. Good grief, yo. I just got stable. Why you be killing me? I wanted to win. But instead, everybody grabs a leg. We can't play around what's on the top of your opponent's deck, right? Like, we did what we could to combat what they had on the board. And then they drew better from there. That can happen. So against this opponent, it looks like two drops will be relevant late. Because they're playing a lot of them. They're basically playing an aggressive lore hold deck. Uh, they've got multiple combat professors, which are very difficult to interact with. Uh, they're also playing at least one combat trick, and they have a lesson and learn package that's not bad. Uh, so here, all of a sudden, I'm interested in Pillar Drop Rescuer. <laughs> Joey, what's up? Hey, Thank so you for the resub. How are we all doing today? We're doing great. Y'all spam some cats for Joey. Thank you very much. The 1 4 is also a good potential addition. But I think I'm interested in that. I also think I am interested in the splashed academic dispute. Finding red mana hasn't been that much of an issue, and there's actually stuff I can get that matters. The 1 1 blockers could conceivably be relevant, the card draw could be relevant. And it's unlikely that uh, containment breach is relevant, but it, it could be. So, what's actively bad against them? Generally speaking, Go Blank is good against lore hold decks. Uh, Dueling Coach is probably too slow. And did we see any targets for Defend the Campus? Just the Elemental Summonings. I, I don't think I want that. And it does keep my instant count okay if we're bringing this in. So I think I can get behind this. We're basically playing everything we could, but yeah, so Amy had asked, I, I started with like thinking we were going to get into blue because somehow the teachings made it all the way around the table and I was kind of flirting with like, are we Witherbloom? Are we Quandrix? And then just kept getting past black cards. Yeah, so they've got like two targets potentially for us to use to fin the campus on. Or is Defend the Campus toughness or power? I think it's power. So it would work on the flyer, but just about everything kills that. The, the problem with that flyer isn't the flyer itself. It's the value that is generated therein. Don't make me play this out. I really don't want to play this out. Okay, I don't have to. I can just play the Mage Hunter as my first play. This would be too slow if we were on the draw, but we're not. That would have been nice a few turns ago. I really need another land. The problem is so do they. And I don't, I'm not super keen on giving them one. But if I hit the other land, I can play the Owl and Shield Mage. I think I probably have to do this. I don't like it. I mean, I want bloody all of this. But okay, we'll be grown up. Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. Yeah, they only hit a land, so we've got that going for us. I don't think I'm ready to cycle this. Although I may need to. 
It's just the tutus don't do that much. It would let me basically just take four a turn for a little bit. And I do want an instant in the graveyard for this. We could do something like here and the poet. Because if I play this and they remove it, I'm taking six. If I just accept that we're probably taking four, I can be okay with that and then try to block. I saw it a lot later than that, Amy. Were you to my left? Bleh. Okay, so so much for that plan. Because Shield Mage just dies to that. Okay, well, it went all the way around the table. God, seeing them on that heated debate means this game is basically over. Which is unfortunate. Yeah, things are not looking good for our hero. We were basically dead as soon as they played that off of the Divine Gambit. Because I would need like a Wrath to stop this and I don't have one. So if I reconstruct, I have three mana left over and can't do anything with it. If I play any blocker, they're going to kill it. And uh, that kind of settles that. Huh. So we're done here. Sorry, YouTube. I wanted to get you a good draft, but sometimes it's hard to read your table and the draws don't line up. And it happens to everybody. It happens to me sometimes. Most of my Strixhaven drafts have been 2-1s. We've snuck a couple 3-0s in there somewhere. And we've snuck a couple 0-2s in there somewhere. Uh, but that one got us. So chat, say goodbye to YouTube. And we're going to concede and be sad. But also not incredibly unexpected. When the draft goes that wonky, I kind of expect it to be a not a wonderful finish. And I'm pleasantly surprised when it works out. Uh, YouTubers, if you'd like to watch the stream live, you can do so at twitch.tv slash We'll see you next time.